Hey, my name is Nick, and today we're gonna to be talking about how Jesus in us lights up the world around us. Do you know someone who has something special about them, something unique, something different, something even peaceful? We often get that when we talk to Jesus followers. We'll watch this God story and you'll see what I mean. When I was about 10 years old, my dad pulled me out of school to take me to the dentist. And while at the dentist, the dentist moving around in my mouth split my lip and was oh. bleeding. So afterwards, my dad took me out to lunch and I was, I was dabbing at my bleeding lip and stuff. And my father told me, well, if you want it to stop bleeding, just pour some salt in it. So I said, okay, and I did that. Now, what he neglected to mention to me is that salt in an open wound is agonizing. So as I'm ah. screaming in pain in the restaurant and shocked that my father has just introduced this world of pain to me, all I could say is he chuckled and said, well, it stopped bleeding, didn't it? My dad. Hey, I'm Jamie Robertson, and welcome to this God story. For our big idea is Jesus in us lights up the world around us. So we're in Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. Now you are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out, trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Now, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Now, this should come as no surprise to any of you, but the world at the time of Jesus did not have electricity. Well, I mean, there was like lightning and static electricity and all that sort of stuff, but they didn't utilize it in the way we do now. You're watching this, and you're probably looking around seeing lights and stuff, all the ways that in this part of the world that the electricity is used to make our lives better. But in Jesus' time, there was no such thing as refrigerators, there was no such thing as flashlights, there was no such thing as phones or indoor lights or electricity in that capacity. So things like salt and light actually have a deeper meaning for the people of Jesus this time and we need to remember that. So without a refrigerator, how do you keep something like, like meat safe? Because we've, we've all opened up the fridge and taken out the milk and gone or you know meat that's bad is gonna make you sick for a long time. Well a couple of things that salt was, was used for was obviously to enhance taste, that hasn't changed, but also to preserve food. You pour salt on it and the food, especially meats, would last longer and be safer. And bonus, and this is just one of those great bonuses of God, uh, something as a preserving agent actually tastes good. Thank you, Lord. So when Jesus is talking about uh, you are salt of the earth, you are, he, he's showing the, the importance of not only safety, but also enhancing. It's, it's, he's showing people that they actually bring an important and joyful element to life. And the same thing goes for light, especially in the ancient world. You know, when it gets dark, it's dark. There's no city lights, there's no street lights. There's, you know, there's, like I said, there's no flashlights. It, darkness can bring danger. In the dark, you can get lost. So lights become incredibly important. So Jesus talks about this light. He's like, the light actually fends off the darkness. The light actually extends the day. Nobody lights something up, and I'm sure the same would be with you. You don't turn on a light and then cover all the lights. You don't turn on a lamp and then cover it up so it's just as dark. What's, what's the point? He's like, you're, you're like a city on top of a hill. And cities in Jesus' times were, were symbols of refuge, uh, of prosperity. Uh, you were safe because if you could get into a city behind the walls, then you weren't at risk of being robbed or, or animals or anything else that can happen to you in the dark, like I said, getting lost. Jesus is giving his people there and you this unbelievable call. All of you want your lives to matter. Whatever that's gonna look like, you, you know that you have something special within you and you want to do something special and, and different and important. And many of you will, and all of you can. And this, again, going back to our last God story, in the very, very first verse in, in the Beatitudes was blessed are those who recognize their need for God. You have been given so many gifts, so many opportunities. You're breathing, you are truly, fearfully, and wonderfully made, but what is gonna set you apart, what, what truly, where your energy and your passion and your power comes from, is from the one who gave you those gifts, who made you to be you, 
who, who said, you know what this world needs is a little bit more you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna infuse those gifts with my own divine creativity. And I'm gonna give you the chance to light up the world. Yeah, many people do amazing things and creative things and, and, and all sorts of spectacular things. But what Jesus is calling us to and what our big idea is trying to instill in us is that it's, it's your recognition of God working within you that truly gives you the ability to shine for this world. I want you to understand that our God is the God of shalom, grace, and peace. And he is about building you up into the most full version of yourself. And here's the crazy part. That includes the mistakes. So own who you are, the things that you want to think are great, and the things that you want to think are not so great. They're you. And if God dwells within you, then clearly the things that you think aren't so great don't really matter to God. You will be a light that shines on a hill because you will be accessing the power that created the universe. And that is something that people can't help but notice. So be authentic, be honest, own your behavior, own your decisions, know what is in your heart. So never forget that God dwells within you. And because of that, others will notice. All right, have a great time, enjoy your discussions, and I can't wait to be with you again. I'm Jamie Robertson, you are you, and both of those things make me very happy. Let's go light up this crazy world of ours. We just heard that we are the salt of the earth and we're the light of the world. And with light, we need it to see, to function, to exist. We need it everywhere. Let's check out our friend Jackson's story to see how he discovered what that kind of light can actually look like in his day to day. I know that Burritos are delicious. I know that my family loves me, and I knew from a very young age that Jesus loved me, cared for me, and was always gonna be there for me. I'm Jackson Kuhn from Prairie Sound, Ontario, and even though I knew God from a very young age, it did not mean that I didn't have any struggles. I grew up playing hockey. Uh, I started when I was three years old. Uh, for me, hockey was always a family event. It was something I did with my family. Uh, my father would make a, a pond rink for us in behind our house uh, every year. Um, and it wasn't until much later in life that I thought I'd even want to do it competitively. It was something that we did just for fun uh, as a family uh, with my brothers. Um, and as I grew older, it became more and more competitive and I started to see some of the opportunities that I could have with it. And it was in those opportunities that really made me strive for excellence in the game of hockey. One really challenging thing that happened to me when I was younger was uh, when I was nine and a half, my uh, father passed away in a tragic accident. And that really was the catalyst for change in my life and how I started to realize um, more who God was, what was he about, was he there for me? Um, and this was really a real life test about was I going to be able to follow this so-called God and was he gonna be there for me? I really felt like when I was 11 years old that I was on a path that was good, and I thought, how could I be on a good path? And some of those examples would be um, my brother being, my older brother being so strong and so willing to lead me and still be there for me. And he was such a good kid, and I thought, wow, how is he like that? And if he wasn't a good kid, surely I wasn't gonna be good, because I was following him so closely. Uh, we had so many men from the community pour into my life, and I thought, Man, there's no way they would do that on their own time if they weren't inspired by God because God knew that I needed that in those moments. So I came to this point where um, I knew that God was real and I had felt him and I've experienced him. And the Holy Spirit was clearly alive in me. And I got to this point through just so many people telling me, there's something special about you. You're so much fun. Like, you know, I, you're so mature for your age. And I thought, no one taught me this. It had to be God, and I realized at that moment, just, to, just right around 13 years old, that God was enough, that he would take care of me through any valley, and he is there in the mountaintops, but it seems to be in those valleys that we need him most, and we look for him. And I had felt that I had hit the lowest valley of any 
secular point. Dying is the end. It's, there's no good there. And God created something beautiful out of it. So after high school, I went right on to play um, university hockey, which in and of itself was a miracle, actually. <laughs> and uh, through university, I really grew, and I grew more in my faith, and I grew to understand more that um, my life was simply an opportunity to serve God, and that wherever He sent me, I would go and I would serve whatever purpose He had for me. And through university, it wasn't always easy, uh, and I had a lot of work to do because I knew that God was going to open doors down the road. I had that feeling. And sure enough, after my last year of university, I was able to go on and play in Finland and then also uh, in Germany for three more years. And in that time, I was able to be salt and light in those places. And I knew that even though those places weren't always going to be places where God was talked about, um, but I knew that the Holy Spirit working through me could be a light and a salt to some of those guys. And some of those guys I still talk to today and I know that I inspire them day in and day out. Today, I'm back in Perry Sound, married with one baby boy. His name is Michael. I currently teach in Wasoxing First Nation, grades six, seven, and eight. And I know that in my life with Christ, in my walk still, that I have a lot to learn. And I still know that God's gonna teach me more and more about how he's enough and I hope that inspires you. I love that Jackson realized that he could go places where people didn't necessarily know God, but he could still be a light and salt to them. Even though Jackson had the opportunity to go to all these different countries, you and I can be salt and light here, whether that's in our community, with our friends, our family, anywhere that you go. Let's break in our small groups to see what this looks like in our own lives today. 